Desde Sudáfrica tenemos una invitada muy especial, Sindiso Kumalo. Esta talentosa diseñadora sustentable es reconocida por su increíble desarrollo textil, un maravilloso relato a través de la estampación y su romántica exposición de las siluetas tradicionales. Sindiso, welcome to our platform. Será entrevistada online desde Cartagena de Indias por la reconocida periodista colombiana Catherine Villota, escritora, experta en moda, creadora y directora de Fashion Radicals, la plataforma digital de cultura, moda y estilo. Bienvenidos. Hola a todos, bienvenidos a Excel Moda. Estamos transmitiendo en YouTube y a las personas que están conectadas también por Zoom. Bienvenidos a todos en esta edición de Excel Moda 2021. Tenemos una invitada muy especial que se llama Sindiso Kumalo, que está con nosotros eh, conectada. Eh, y bueno, queremos saludarla y hablar de ellas, con ella sobre sustentabilidad, sobre moda sustentable, sobre empoderamiento a través de la moda y de cómo su herencia africana, especialmente de... De, la, de, las, de comunidades como Zulu, Nebele y Guazulu, pues obviamente hacen parte de ese ANN de marca y cómo eso también es sustentable. Entonces, damos le paso a Sindiso para poderla saludar. Sindiso, ¿estás ahí? Hi, Sindiso. Hi, hi, how are you? Hi, hi, everyone. Um, hi, Sindiso, thank you again for being here. In Excel Moda, uh, I would I would like to read your bio uh, before uh, we start the interview. So we, we, but everybody knows you a little bit more. So I will read your bio first. Sindiso Kumalo is a sustainable sustainable textile designer based in Cape Town, Central San Martin graduate. Kumalo studied architecture at the University of Cape Town prior to moving to London, where she went to sorry, where she went on to study masters in design of textile futures. And Sindiso found her label with a focus of creating modern sustainable textiles with a strong emphasis on Africa storytelling. She designed the textiles in her collection by hand through watercolors and collages. Over the years, she has developed a unique colorful visual voice which draws upon her Zulu and Nevele heritage and also speaks to the land of Wasulu Natal, where she's from. Sustainability, craft, and empowerment light on the heart of the label. And she works very close with DGOs in developing handmade textiles for her collections. In October 2015, she won Vogue Italia, who's on the next Dubai competition. And fashion and empowerment are what Sindisu feels very passionate about it. She has spoke, spoken, she has, be, he, she has spoken at the United Nations of Sustainability in Fashion and I'm currently working close with the International Trade Center at the Ethical Fashion Initiative. She has presented her work at Milan Fashion Week with the support of the Camera Nacional de la Moda. Her work has been exhibited at Royal Festival Hall in London, the Smithsonian Museum of Africa Art in Washington, Louisiana Museum in Denmark, and the States Mocha Museum Cape Town. Her work has been published in Vogue Italia, Vogue UK, Elle Magazine, and Marie Claire Magazine, and Africa Architecture, Culture, and Identity. She has I can't hear you. Hi, I can't, I can't hear you at all. I'm not sure what's happened. Um, let me try again. I don't I could, hear Sindiso. Oh, there we go. Oh. There we go. Now I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Sí. Okay. Bad. Okay. Sindiso, did you hear the question? No, I didn't. Can you ask me again? Sorry. Sure. First of all, I would like to ask you about your relationship with colors and texture. How did it start that relationship for you, the color and textiles? 
Um, so I actually grew up in a country called Botswana, which is basically, we lived in this little city called Kaburoni, which is surrounded by desert. And I think for me, like, you know, there's nothing like the desert sky and the, the way the land looks like in the desert. And I think as a child, I, I definitely remember having just, you know, like always thinking about color because of like the visual of the desert when I was growing up. So I think it like, then I'm, then we moved back to South Africa and then I lived in KwaZulu Natal. And again, the landscapes became a very important um, visual, like uh, inspiration, so to speak, you know, everything is very lush and very bright and colorful there. So I think it was definitely for me, really important just yeah and so I think I, I, I basically came to design and color through like my personal experience with the landscape and then then interpreting that into um, what we now see as my textiles. Great um, so Tell me now about the Zulu and Nevele heritage, and also what Zulu, how does influence your work? Um, so, I mean, I can even say, yeah, I guess, you know, I'm a yeah, Zulu girl, and I guess for me, it's really important, like when you on, have a platform or a stage to talk about design, I think using, um, using design as a platform to talk about your heritage is a really powerful thing for me. And, uh, you know, even in the shirts I'm wearing today, there's like a print, which is basically, um, it's a hand drawn, where is she? It's a hand drawn print of like a, a Zulu. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's my mother actually on my wedding day, on my Zulu wedding day. And so it's, it's really important for me to just talk about, you know, what is like, you know, like getting people to know, like, what is a Zulu wedding that's so completely different to like, you know, the kind of quintessential wedding. And, and I think it's also just a really beautiful way of just exposing like the beauty of South Africa and the, the, the vastness of it. Um, so because I think so often people think, oh, Africa is just a country and it's not like, you know, there's just so many different cultures. And, and so for me, it's just, it's, it really, it, it's just like a natural thing for me to be able to bring my heritage into the work that we do and have them sit together um, and yeah, and talk a positive story about Africa. Cause I think there are so many kind of negative connotations sometimes. And I even know just living in South Africa, I have, I used to live in London and some of my friends, they're scared to visit us because you know, the crime and all these things. So I think it's like, just to tell positive stories and to show that there's just so many different sides to who we are um, as Africans and as South Africans. It's a really important part of my work. Yeah, I, we can tell about it. Um, did you start studying architecture, right? First. Yes. And um, how do you find the connection between spaces and textiles, fashion and architecture? Yeah, I mean, I think the way I approach my work is definitely from an architectural point of view, in the sense that I think, you know, with architecture, you kind of really do approach the work quite conceptually in the beginning. Um, and it's all about fleshing out whatever concept you're trying to understand. And for me, a lot of the time, I don't actually even know what the collection's going to be in the end. I'm more interested in understanding the concepts and the storytelling and allowing that to lead the collection. And I think that's definitely quite an architectural way of working. I don't think we, you know, we never used to just draw the plan of what the house is going to, you know what I mean? It's, it's very much like, what is this space? What is, what, what does it mean? What's the concept? And almost allowing the concept to lead the design. So I think that's definitely how I managed to mirror my architectural process with my textile process. And, you know, there are many similarities, you know, like architecture exists the material um, and the material makes such a difference to how a room feels, how a space feels. Um, a wooden room is so different to a concrete space, you know? And so 
for me, same thing with materials, like working as a textile designer. Yeah, there's a, I have a real sensitivity to the materiality of what I'm making, you know, the weights of different fabrics, how they're going to sit, what they're going to feel like. You know, we do a lot of um, embroidery work and hand crafting. So for us, again, like the craft of how the textile is made, very much like quite an important facet in what we do. So I think, yeah, there's definitely a lot of mirroring between the two that I do. Great. Um, let's talk about sustainability. What is it for you? And how, how a fashion brand can be sustainable? It's not just about being eco. It's also about, be, um, about social responsibilities, ethic, ethical statements, and fair trade, right? Uh, let's talk about that, please. How do you understand the sustainability in fashion? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, we are a sustainable fashion brand. And I think for us, a really important part of sustainability is actually talking about um, social empowerment. Because yeah. if you look at the poorest areas in the world, yes. whether it's in Cape Town, whether it's in Mumbai, wherever it is, you'll always find the worst environmental problems there you know so so in addressing social issues you are then also in, in invariably addressing environmental issues and so for us sustainability really does have to work hand in hand with social upliftment especially from a south african point of view um and i think it's also just about like educating and, and making sure people feel like they're all part of the sustainability conversation. You know, I'm very aware that sometimes you get a real top down idea of like, this is what sustainability is in the West, but then what about the rest of the world? You know, everyone's got their own interpretation and what it, what it means for their environments, you know? And so for me, it's all about getting people, more people educated in sustainability, how they can also be sustainable consumers. Because I also think we can't just put everything on the industry and say oh, okay it's the fashion industry because it's also us as consumers like as a consumer how you you know your your dollar is really going to like influence things and if you if you like you vote with your dollar and so if you're going to buy like a whole lot of like trashy fast fashion clothes and only wear them for a season that's what you're bringing to the world and so you know it's it's not just about us as designers but i think together as like designers and consumers thinking about how we where we buy our clothes how long we have them for i mean for me we we do a lot of mending workshops teaching people how to fix buttons and 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 how to make things old things new again and make them special again because it, i i have beautiful old vintage clothes from my grandmother and there's no reason why you shouldn't have clothing that lasts generations um so yeah i definitely have a real i feel like sustainability to me is, is about longevity and what you're consuming um it's about the social issues social empowerment issues which we address a lot of in our brand um and then obviously environmental issues so we do work with a lot of organic cottons um, and hemp and linens and mainly actually only natural fibers because of, you know, we want to make sure that if any, if any of our clothes do end up in a landfill, hopefully they don't, but we want to make sure that they're all going to decompose eventually. So in that case, how do you do new collections in what time, in what time and how do you propose to your consumer that, uh, that they were, they look for something more longer and Versatile. How do you start? I mean, how a brand can be sustainable in in terms of money and economical? Sure. Versus... I mean, I, I mean, I think the first thing that any brand should do is figure out what they what part of sustainability they want to talk to. So for us as a brand, our very first point was social upliftment, and so we used to, and we still do. We work with NGOs across the country, in parts of Africa, in West Africa. And it was just very important to us that whatever um, money revenue comes into our business, those sales will then also change small communities across. So it was, yeah, really important for us. And I think for any brand, I think you just need to figure out like what, what is it about sustainability that you're interested in? Because there's so many facets, you know, I have a lot of friends who are very interested in like these new um textiles where you've got like pineapple 
you know, pineapple leathers and all these, you know, so it, it, I think it's also just about like finding out for yourself, like which, which portion is of interest to you and what is also accessible to you. You know, for me, we have so many crafters and so many handmade people we can tap into and work with and teach and empower. And so that's what's accessible for me in South Africa. It's less accessible for me to get organic cotton, you know? So it's like, working with what you have is also really important. And like, I do believe that if you, you know, want to get involved in sustainability, the other best option is to see what sustainable designers are doing, you know, like go to, you know, go to their websites, check out what they're up to, like, what are the programs they're doing? You know, I got a lot of support from like, um, the Italian Fashion Council, Cam Camera della Moda, and also from, the UN ethical initi fashion initiative. And so, you know, like researching what, what do those companies do and how do they support, you know, emerging designers? And that's kind of, yeah, I think that's a good way of sort of figuring out how to get into sustainability is also just seeing what other designers who are sustainable are doing. Great. Now you mentioned empowerment. So why fashion and empowering, empowerment are important for you and how do you do it? Yeah, I mean, it, it comes back to my point where I do believe that with every environment where there's huge um, social disparities and where you have like, you know, sh sharks and, you know, just terrible poverty, you're not going to have an environmentally, like it's not, it's going to be a very also environmentally quite toxic environment. And so I think for me, it's just definitely like, I feel like, the only way I can make real change in my country is by changing the social dynamic. And, right. you know, we come from a place where there's absolute crazy wealth and like super poor. And um, yeah, I think it's, and it's not, you know, it's not unusual, um, but I think it's something that for me, it's like, there's no way of we've got to try and bridge that gap if we really also want to have everyone feel like they have a part to play within building the world saving the planet you know making the world a better place for all of us so I think like because people are gonna people are more interested in what's the food on their table not to talk to you about the planet if they don't have any food on their table so for me it's about you know yeah trying to get as many um people on board with the social empowerment Pro projects that we do um and yeah and also give a little bit of hope i think there's so much negativity out there in the world and sometimes we feel a bit hopeless and sometimes we feel like you know you feel like especially when i think about like the environment you feel like oh gosh like it's just like so much but i think you know to bring some hope and to make people feel like every step actually makes some kind of positive gain in some way and you know definitely for us like we went from like working with this workshop in Bikino Faso and ordering, you know, 50 meters of fabric. And, you know, now we're in Netta Porta and we're ordering 800 meters of fabric from them, you know? And so they've had to increase their setup. And so, you know, that is for me an empowering story because it just means like that revenue is then going to those families in Bikino Faso and, you know, just making, making fashion be of use and of activism. So great. So let's talk about your last collection, Spring Summer 2022. What are the inspiration? Let's talk about the high, delicate neck in the tops, blouses, and dresses that I really love. Also the ruffles here on the, on the top. And I, th I believe it's uh, inspired by the library. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so my latest collection um, is called Jaeger. And Jaeger, um, I went to the University of Cape Town, that's where I studied architecture. And Jaeger was, um, yeah, our library, basically. And it was also library to the Africans. More recently, it was the home of the African Studies Library. And sadly, in a mountain fire, it got burnt down. And everything from the books to, like, you know, film resources, everything was burned, um, except for some things that were underneath underground in the basement, which were recovered. Um, and so I guess there was, for me, it was like obviously a lot of heartache losing an, a library that was so important to me. 
but also to talk about like the idea of heritage and like the types of heritage we have as Africans. It's not just our cultural heritage, but also, it was our literal heritage. It was our filmmaking heritage. It was all the different kinds of storytellers that existed in that library, be there the graphic designers who made political posters in the 60s or the novelists or, you know, like I, you know, we had like book covers that we put on skirts. Um, you know, the illustrations from that time. And so I think it's, for me, again, it kind of feeds into this whole notion of, you know, what is our heritage and, and opening eyes to like the vastness of it. Um, and then also, I guess, yeah, paying homage to a place that actually did like educate me and make me the person that I am today. So obviously it was a sad collection, but it was definitely one that was, and I think like, you know, something that a, a friend of mine actually said to me when I was like, oh, it's too painful doing this collection. And he said to me, go to the pain. That's when you're going to find like the healing and the strength. And, you know, he's like, go, go to the pain. And so I think in a way it's like, just like a theory in life, like go to the thing that's most challenging, you know, go to, go to the things that actually don't feel comfortable. Cause that's actually where you're going to find like true inspiration and like, you know, it definitely was also therapy for me doing the collection. Great. Uh, tell us about this um, DNA sign that you have in your designs. It's almost like a Victorian kind of neck, neck, neck design or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's definitely, it's de <laughs> signing I'm wearing this shit. Um, yeah, it's definitely, I think um, I've, I, I've over time. So my, it was about four years ago. I got really interested in um, like old, uh, specifically African-American um, portraiture um, from like the 1800s. Cause I was just very interested in how just after slavery, right. how these women and these men would have these photos taken because the idea of anyone having a photo taken at that time you had to be super important. And so I was very interested in these kind of like the first free slaves, so to speak, having these images. And so I did a lot of studying of those images, not just only the African-American images, but ones that also were in um, Europe and, and uh, specifically the UK. And I guess I started to kind of pull out shapes because my, my collections began to then talk about slavery and the, the slave trade. And um, and I think in kind of talking about it, I began to sort of like interpret some of the clothes that they were wearing when yes. they were free. Um, I'm sorry. And so I think, yeah, that was definitely um, like for us, like, again, it's it was finding, you know, I won't say like savvy is inspiring. It's again, a very hard topic. And I think maybe that's what we do as a brand is we're like, quite interested in the hard topics, but also talking about like hope within hope within sadness. So when we did our pre-collection two seasons ago, like it was inspired by a lady called Harriet Tubman who essentially freed over 70 slaves in her life. She was five foot four, she was my height, went back to the South over 15 times to free so many slaves. And I just wanted to tell the story of, like, cause for me, she was like a super, you know, I spoke, talked to my children the story. They're like, she's a superhero, you know? So I think um, in that, like in me studying these portraits and studying these women, it's also just about like, kind of also paying homage to the greatness um, that a lot of them had and the courage that a lot of them had. Um, and so, yeah, that's probably where the signatures come from is that kind of style, Victorian style, um, dress that you would see in all those portraits. Right. Actually, um, when I saw your collection, have you read The Infinity in a Red of Irene Vallejo? No. Well, actually, I when I saw your collection, well, in that book, she speaks about books, uh, Alejandria Library in the Asians, and librarians in general. And when, oh. she, and when I saw your collection, I remember this phrase. Oh. After all, Maybe Iparkia, the only philosopher that antiques made a biography, thought with some humor that the mind is a big loom of words. Nowadays, we still talk with textiles metaphors, web, wraps, 
loom stories and webbing stories. What is a text for us if not a set of not verbal strands? So when you say about telling the story, yes. the past, the heritage, it's about that, right? So I, how do you find this metaphor in your last collection? I mean, when I saw I was, she's talking the heritage, but she's um, speaking through clothes about yeah. history. Yes, no, I mean, I think like this, yeah, it's very powerful. And please, can you send me um, what you've uh, written there? Because I thought that was very powerful. I think there's definitely something about like weaving stories through um, clothing and um, and how like, you know, clothing can be like a real tool to, like I always say to people, I can say whatever I want in a textile. It's amazing. Like, I feel like I have like, I have like the gold card. I can, I can write whatever I want, you know? And, and like, and um it's uh, it's definitely, I feel like, you know, we as well, myself as a designer, like well, a big part of it is also weaving the stories of women and how women have been disenfranchised and how we can address these issues now, but also like look to like a brighter future. Um, so it's a combination because I'm, I'm always interested in female entrepreneurs, especially like pre-1960, like, like Marimeko, um, the lady who started Marimeko, like she was like in like 1950s, like female entrepreneur. So I'm just always really interested in like how women are able to kind of get themselves out of like deeply, yeah, like um, I'm saying uh, oppressive regimes, but you know, we only just voted in the twenties, you know? So it's like, I just feel like I'm, I'm just really interested in that. And, and, and also bringing like, shedding light to like, even if you are in like a place that feels really hopeless, they can always be light and they can always be something powerful that you could do or say. And yeah, but yeah, I, lo I love that, that metaphor of weaving, especially like the idea of weaving, um, weaving yeah. our stories and textiles. Right. Um, I saw uh, a photograph in your Instagram and um, it's a librarian two piece suit made from fabric hand woven in workshops in Burkina Faso, you also mentioned earlier. And also an image of skirt was taken from a book cover you mentioned also. So what else do we have in that collection from the past of the library and the heritage that they have? Sure. So, I mean, so there is like, there's a, I worked with an amazing, and again, I really do love working with uh, females um, when I, um, I try to be quite female centric in my work, not in a bad way, just, just in a kind of, I like to use what I'm doing as a voice for different females, especially women of color to speak through. And um, I worked with this amazing illustrator called Snalo, who basically um, like, she basically did these interpretations of these political posters. So there's one political poster with this lady with her hands up in the air. Yeah. And we would take snippets of that. So the poster actually had like a, a kind of army tank coming towards her. So we decided, you know, we were almost taking snippets of political posters and in a way framing them in a way where you can see this woman is in protest. Um, and, you know, there's also like a timelessness about it. It could be in a protest today or it could be in a protest 50 years ago. Um, and yeah, and, and then, and putting it in a garment in a way that is still compelling for the wearer to want to wear it, because if we put the tank next to the woman, it's unlikely we would have been able to sell that shirt. So right. it's also just like finding ways to communicate like what you wanna, what you wanna say through, your, through activism in a way that still leads people in and um, still makes people feel I don't know, comfortable to be in. So that was one of one of the one of the things we did was we did a lot of interpretation of different political posters. And then there's one of my muses, her name is Charlotte Matreche. She okay. um, is a South African, um, she was a political activist. And I think one of the first South African women to get a bachelor's degree um, in 1901. So I was like, whoa, we couldn't vote. How did you get a degree? Like, you know, so like, again, I'm like, who is, like, I find these women and I'm like, who are they? I must know more. Um, so she sang in a choir called the African Choir and they toured around Europe. And um, she wore a, 
yeah, she just had this beautiful kind of, there was this photograph taken of her. So I, again, I took all these old photographs of her and we interpreted into a print in one of our garments. So yeah, there was a lot of just kind of using illustration. Um, and now, you know, I find it much, much more exciting to work with illustrators my work and I and I think that's like definitely with my work it's like working with female illustrators or filmmakers but it's it's really great to collaborate because you tell your story in different ways and you allow other people to also reinterpret your story um so yeah so we did a lot of mainly a lot of illustrations um of old photographs um maps also that we'd found um on the library resource book. So there was, we, we, we had those cause there was, and I think that was the other thing is like also realizing that the library did actually digitize a lot of, um, a lot of, obviously they couldn't digitize a lot of the books but they definitely digitized a lot of maps. And there's a huge like res resource of information that's open to everyone. And I didn't even know this, but it's like literally anyone can go onto their computer and see what this library had or held. So, so I think that was also quite positive for me just to feel like, okay, cool. You know, not all was lost. A lot was digitized. So great. Let's talk about color. I see that your collections are very colorful. Um, what are these um, colorful like range that you use? How do you inspire that? In, no, how do you, like how do you go in that color and make the collection or do you just follow the concept and then look for the colors? How is that relation with the colors? Yeah, it, again, the, the concept leads everything for me. Right. So the concept this season was the burning of a library and then the, the idea of printing and a printing press. And when you're printing, you use CMYK other other colors for printing so and and what the and the gradient and how to yeah. so I think yeah. and then also what is the color of a book page so we have a lot of cream in the collection because the pages are cream they're not white um we yeah the colors and the the main colors we use in this collection were are all very much coming from this idea of um printing and uh and using like a you know, very clear blue, very clear green, um, kind of green that you'd see in a printing press. Um, and then also the other thing was when, so after um, after the fire, so like when we did the film for uh, Fashion Week, uh, for Milan Fashion Week uh, two weeks ago, we went to the mountain and we were walking around and we have all these yellow flowers everywhere, like beautiful yellow flowers growing around all these bird tusks. So then again, we put all those yellow flowers back onto the garment. So yeah, it's, it's always led by the, the it's always led yeah. by the concept. Yeah, right. always led by the concept. I think it's, it's almost like, it, it's also quite satisfying when you feel like, you feel held by the concept and you feel uh -huh. like the concept can just carry you. Um, and that's why it's, I guess my my hardest part is actually finding out what the concept's gonna be every season, because I think that's, that's the bit that I find hard to do because it's it's definitely not, it's much, yeah, it's, it, once you get it, then you're cool, you can go, but it takes time to kind of right. figure out like, what is it that I'm thinking? What is it I'm feeling? And I'm also like a very intuitive person. So I always say to people like, go to what you're feeling in your heart, like intuitively, you know, and if something feels right, like move with that. Um, but yeah, I think definitely that that's always my hardest bit is like figuring out what the concept's gonna be. Awesome. Cindy, so thank you so much for your time. It was very inspiring to hear you about your, like, like your, creative process and everything. So thank you for being with us and thank you for being in Excel Moda. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Bye. Bye-bye.